Hey guys, even here, and this video we're gonna start with something very interesting, something fun. Uh, this video right here you're watching, this is guy Sister Nino posing, flexing legs with Martin Fitzwater. If you don't know who he is, he's obviously an IVB pro. Uh, he's very young, I believe. I think he's like 25 or something and really big for his age. So far, he didn't win any pro shows, but you know, he's very strong, pretty popular on social media. He is a training partner of Brad Wilkin, I believe. With time, I'm sure he's going to make a great IVB pro, but maybe the way he's behaving isn't exactly the best. He did something he didn't really think through and uh, he's suffering the consequences now. So this is what happened. This was the video you're watching here. Uh, he was flexing his legs with Guy Sister Nino and Nick Walker commented on this video saying Guy's legs are bigger. And uh, Martin, he didn't reply to him directly, but he made another comment saying at least I won't throw a clot and die. Nightcrawler, Nick. Obviously talking about Nick's lower legs, actually calves, varicose veins to be more precise, which really isn't a health problem, it's mainly an aesthetic thing, but doesn't really matter. The thing is, Martin took it way too far. He said that Nick is going to have a clot and die. And he said this in the midst of this whole chaos happening, bodybuilders dying every day, so many great bodybuilders have passed away in the past year, two or three, and everybody is worried who is going to be next, and Martin, who is a fellow bodybuilder, also a big guy, also a pro, competing, maybe he's going to compete against Nick and against so many other bodybuilders and some of them may actually die, you know, it is happening, you know, this is unhealthy sport, we all know that, but for a fellow competitor to insult another competitor in such a way, in this horrible manner, it wasn't nice, it was over the line and the consequences were what you would imagine they would be. As you can see, there are 99 freaking comments and they are all hating Martin for what he said. You guys can tell me, is this really the proportionate response to what Martin says? What Martin says was really bad and these comments are horrible. Look at this comment, how long it is. You know, they are all hate comments, they are all against Martin. And I mean, what was he expecting? It was not a smart idea to do this. And so he ended up making an apology video. All right, well, now I've got a thousand messages and 500 death threats, and they finally stopped coming in. Um, I can make an apology, uh, mostly to Nick, but really to everybody in the sport. Uh, look, guys, I was pissed off. I've been on a long trip. Um, I haven't been sleeping, and I let it get the best of me. Nick and I have our issues outside of bodybuilding. I don't like Nick as a person, and he knew that commenting on that would get under my skin. I took it way too far. Um, I don't want any bodybuilders to die um, any more than we've already had and it wasn't like that I just let my temper get the best of me and then I tried to act tough in doing so um, I wish Nick the best I wish we could all stick together as a bodybuilding community I know this isn't gonna save face for me or anything so don't expect that that's what this is for but I do want to apologize to Nick and let him know that that was on called for and uh, I hope and wish him the best and uh, I'll just keep my mouth shut and train Alright, so he apologized, he made a public apology video, and I would assume that this was, you know, the guidance of Guy Sister and, you know, I'm sure a Guy told him what he needs to do in order to make this uh, go away. I'm sure his day wasn't very comfortable, very nice after receiving so many hate messages, as he says, death threats even. And I don't, I, don't, I don't think Nick did anything about this. I don't think Nick, like, told his followers to do this. I think this is just a natural response, you know, from all the fans. Not even, like, Nick's fanboys, you know, a bunch of kids who are, like, Nick's army. No, I think this is just a normal response that you would expect from a bodybuilding community when somebody says that the other bodybuilder is going to die, you know, from a clot, blood clot. And you know, not a very nice thing that he said, but, you know, hey, he apologized publicly to Nick and to everybody, and I'm sure this will slowly go away, so Martin can relax, and as he says, shut up and just train. 
Oh, and as far as who has bigger legs, Guy Cisternino or Martin Fitzwater, obviously Martin has bigger legs. I mean, Guy is retired and he had a quad tear, I believe, recently. Uh, he only recently started training legs really hard. They came up, but they are not as big as Martin's, who is an open bodybuilder at his prime. Uh, but Guy is a master poser. He knows how to pose and he knows how to out-tangle. As you can see, he took a full, almost two steps forward. Also, Guy knows how to make his hamstrings pop like crazy. Look at this. And when he does that, his legs look really big. And also, Guy does have really big legs. Uh, but also, it's important to say that Nick did this basically on purpose. I mean, him and Martin have some problems out of bodybuilding. As Martin says, he doesn't like him as a person. And he knew that he's going to get under Martin's skin. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not sure that he thought this is something that Martin would say. And or Nick is going to die from a blood clot. <laughs> he probably didn't expect that. But uh, he wanted to provoke him. And he did that very successfully, I gotta say. So let's talk about Nick Walker for a moment as well. Before we do that, I just want to introduce this product from the old school apps to you guys. It is called Vintage Band. It's not like a simple product, just like glucosamine, MSM, uh, collagen, or whatever. It is a combination of a couple of great ingredients, and it makes a great joint health supplement. So guys, if you want to support me and my channel, try this product out. Use code EVAN or just click on the link in the description of this video. It's gonna get you there so you can buy it that way. Thanks, guys. Now, let's talk about Nick Walker. This is him right now, and he looks like an absolute monster right now. If you're wondering what happened, how is he looking this much better? Is it just the lighting or something else? Well, if you listen to him on a podcast with Fuad, he basically says that he, he, he actually moved to Florida, to Tampa. So now he's training at the MI40 gym. He has the atmosphere is awesome. It's a hardcore gym. And he says an atmosphere and a great gym makes a really big change. So <laughs> this is how he looks now. He has gotten much bigger and stronger as well. This is inclined pressing 185 pound dumbbells. Uh, do you guys buy it? Do you guys think that this is the reason why he looks so much bigger and better at the atmosphere? You know, <laughs> I don't think so. I really don't think so. I think he was just cruising for a while for health purposes. And now uh, after he has checked everything and everything looks fine, he started blasting again. Uh, so he looks like his old self, finally. What is the reason? The atmosphere changed? No, it is gear. He started blasting. So this is him, and he looks amazing. It looks like he grew, actually, in that period when he wasn't really looking his best, when he wasn't blasting full. Um, you know, he, he, he actually made some progress. Now that he introduced more gear and probably more food, and he actually looks bigger and fuller, you can see the results of the off-season. And there is still more time, and he has a lot of time to actually grow even more. I mean, he doesn't really want to grow, like overall grow, but he wants to improve certain body parts, like chest, for example, maybe some back as well. And, uh, you know, he's going to probably, he's definitely going to look much improved. And this is the guy that makes improvements season after season, show after show. And now that he had a full year to focus on improvements, can you imagine what he's going to look like on stage finally? I don't know how much it's gonna hurt him that he stopped working with Matt. Maybe it's not gonna be the greatest thing for him. Maybe he won't peak as well, but I think he's going to make improvements and he's going to be better next time he steps on stage and that's gonna be the Mr. Olympia. All right, next, uh, here is the guy that is in a desperate need of a good, proper off-season, Regan Grimes. This is him right now. It looks like he has blown up quite nicely after the competition season. Um, now, did he make any changes and improvements? Hell no, you can't make any improvements in a matter of a month or two, even like three, four months, it's not enough. It, it's gonna take at least like nine months, you know, if you compete once a year, you do one competitive season a year, that's like the minimum time for uh, somebody with great genetics to make progress. Somebody with uh, one in a billion growth genetics like Nick Walker can make progress in shorter time. But these guys like Regan Grimes here, no, no, you can't make progress that much progress that is actually necessary in three, four months. It's gonna take a year, ideally two years. If he skipped the entire 2022 and 2023, and he competed in 2024 and actually worked really, really hard on improving his physique. 
then he would probably make the best gains. But I don't think he has enough patience to do that. He probably likes to compete. I mean, I get it. I'm a competitor myself. I'm not a pro like Regan. I don't have fans. But I know what it's like to be on that stage, uh, to be loved by people, to be shared uh, in other people's stories, to have people telling you you look awesome and all that stuff. It is really awesome and it's kind of addictive. And I can't even imagine what it's like on, on Regan's level, especially on a level of somebody who has so many fans. You know, of course, he has more pressure, that, that's like kind of like a bad thing, but you know, pressure is a privilege, like Chris Bumstead says, so I'm sure it's a lot of fun for him to compete, and I know it's not fun, and it's not fun, and it's not a good thing for his uh, business, you know, for his career, uh, in terms of like making money right now, that he doesn't compete, and that he isn't relevant, but if he wants to make a real impact in bodybuilding, like a competitor, he needs a longer off-season. Uh, he's on the right path right now, look at him here, he looks much bigger, and he needs to stay bigger for a while, when you stay bigger for a while, more of that new muscle stays, if you, if you just, you know, get a little bit bigger and you die down, you lose everything you gained, so he needs to definitely work on, on getting bigger, working on that, on those legs, for sure, those legs need to come up, and like overall, he needs more size. Even though he looks like a freak here, and he's a freak because he's a taller guy, he still needs to fill up that frame in order to be competitive when he's in a really good shape against guys that are like, you know, really, really big. So I think he's on the right path. I hope he's going to stay on that path and keep growing. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.